Have you ever rented an apartment or a house? I'm sure most of you will say yes. You definitely know the renting rules in your own country. But let's talk about Russia today. Is it different or not compared to your countries? I think this will be especially interesting for those who are planning to relocate to Moscow or to other cities of Russia or who are just interested in real estate in general. Let's go! Hello, my name is Anna and Moscow is my home city. For 10 years already I'm working as a real estate agent and today I will tell you about uh, renting procedures in Russia and how they are different to the rest of the world. So let's start with the first point. Let's start with the length of the contract. We have short-term contracts and long-term contracts. Short-term contracts is something which is much more or less than one year, like three, six, nine months. Uh, please know that the landlords are not usually willing to rent on a short-term basis. But if you're willing to pay them more than the asking price, then maybe they will be more likely to let you live in their apartment for a short term. Uh, but the long-term contracts also don't last longer than one year and it is connected with the Russian legislation. Because if you want to sign a contract for like two years, three years, four years, five years, five years whatever, you need to register it. And most parties uh, prefer to avoid it. So that's why if you plan to rent longer than one year, you can prepare several contracts and sign them at once. Just change the dates in them. This will work. The second point we'll talk about is the types of the apartments. So there are furnished apartments, unfurnished apartments and semi-furnished apartments. Obviously, furnished apartments means that there is everything in the apartment, like um, furniture in the kitchen and all the technical appliances, furniture in all the rooms, fully equipped bathrooms, uh, lighting on the ceilings and on the walls. There can be some minor things missing like forks, spoons, towels, pillows, but usually the landlords are willing to buy it if you ask them. If not, you can buy it yourself. It's not difficult to do. The unfurnished apartment is uh, the apartments which have furniture in the kitchen, uh, all the technical appliances in the kitchen, fully equipped bathrooms with the washing machine, uh, the lighting on the ceilings, on the walls. Uh, just um, if the apartment is unfurnished, it is meant that uh, you are coming with your own furniture and you have a space to put it around. Uh, usually the landlords are not buying furniture to the unfurnished apartments, only if you ask them for some minor things. Semi-furnished apartments have everything the same as unfurnished apartments. Uh, the difference is that they might have some pieces of furniture left by the landlord or by the previous tenant. In the semi-furnished apartments, landlords are usually ready to provide some furniture or buy some furniture upon tenant's request. So uh, you might have a chance to tell the landlords exactly what you need. I gave you so many details about uh, types of the apartments that we have uh, because uh, from what I've heard from my international clients that in their countries, the apartments can go without kitchen furniture, without some technical appliances, without flooring, without lighting on the ceilings or on the walls. Uh, you will not find apartments like this in Moscow. And regarding washing machines, from what I know, for example, in Sweden or the United States, people might not have washing machines in their apartments and they go to the first floor or to the basement. They need to book the time to do the laundry or like in the America where the people uh, go to some laundry shops or automats to do their laundry. Uh, in Moscow, you will be lucky to do it in your own home. And if you are even luckier, you will have a dryer in the apartment. And I find it a big plus, of course. The third point I wanted to mention is the storage space, additional storage space, I mean, in the building itself. 
My clients usually ask uh, Anna, is there any storage where we can store our bikes or like big stuff we don't use during the year? Uh, unfortunately, it will be very hard for you to find a building like this in Moscow because most of the buildings are uh, built long time ago and they just didn't do it before. Uh, you might find these storage spaces in the new buildings, but there are not so many of them in the city center where most of the expats live. And now we are coming to points number four and number five, and I think they're the most important ones, so stay tuned. So number four is utility bills. From what I've heard from my friends and from my clients, when you rent, an apartment or a house in your country, what you usually do is um, after you rented a house or an apartment, you call the utility company, which provides you electricity, gas, or water, or internet, telephone line, and you put all these bills on your own name. So when you're living in the house or an apartment, you are receiving bills um, on your own name and you pay them yourself. In Moscow, it's different. Nobody does it. So all the bills are still addressed uh, to the landlord and the landlord usually pays them himself. Uh, what you do is you either compensate these uh, costs or if you agreed so with the landlord, it can be covered by the landlord himself from the rent amount that he gets. Point number five, I think, is the most important for you to know. Usually when you rent an apartment or a house in your own country, you need to provide the landlord with a letter about yourself, or with the papers from, the, from your employer, from the bank, uh, saying um, what's your salary, for how long your contract is, what are your savings. You need to provide some reference letters from the previous landlords or like from the people who, who know you. But in Moscow, it doesn't work like that because uh, it's not common to provide these sort of papers and nobody usually will ask you to provide these letters. Of course, if you have something like this to provide, the landlords will be quite happy. And I think it's a good idea to have uh, papers like this. At least the landlord will not know who he's dealing with, but it's not in the tradition. So how it usually works is, um, you like the apartment, you tell the landlord that you like the apartment and if the landlord is happy with the terms and conditions that you offer and if he likes you as a person, he will say yes to renting an apartment to you. Usually it happens either at the spot at the apartment or he can take one, two, three days if he has other viewings, but uh, it will not take like two, three weeks or one month to get a reply. So I think it's the best thing for you to know and um, I'm sure you will find it much easier than in your country. So this is everything I wanted to tell you in this video. If you liked it, uh, please subscribe to my channel and share it uh, with those you know who are interested in the real estate markets or maybe you have friends who are planning to relocate to Moscow. Please leave me a comment uh, regarding the renting rules in your country, in your city, and let's compare them to what we have in Moscow, Russia. It will be interesting for me to know. And uh, I wish you a great day ahead and uh, we'll see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.